Why the fuck you lying? Why, Why you always lying? Why? Mm, oh my God, stop fucking lying. Always lying to me. Why? You lying so much. Why? You making it hard for me. Yeah. Every time you tell me something, I figure that you're lying. Mm. Ooh, it's almost like you faking. Oh yeah. Yeah, I know you're lying, but you sound excited, and you know that I know that you're lying. Alright, so I'm making this video before I head out to work today. Uh, it is the, the morning after the Game Awards, of course, and everything that has gone on. Um, what you saw at the beginning was this person's Twitter. This person literally is one of the most saltiest people I've seen, to the point where... When people are thanking Nintendo, they've quoted them, as you see here, and are just, oh, it's fanboy logic. What? You know, people like this are really what's, I, I like, let's scroll down here. Um, Hideki likes his console like his penis. Small and underwhelming. People like this are the problem with the industry. Uh, these are the people who, they just want to ruin other people's fun. And we can't let them, you know. Whether you're a Nintendo fan or just a Bayonetta fan who has a, who has a Switch or is buying a Switch, because there's lots of people saying they're going to buy a Switch just to play Bayonetta. Um, that's their decision. Uh, but this person, if you scroll down, they're all like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck off fanboys, you know, fuck buying a console for one game, you know. And it's just like, it's unnecessary. <laughs> it's really unnecessary. It's really disrespectful. Um, again, everyone's entitled to their opinion. So I can respect this person's um you know frustration over that okay maybe it's not on ps4 or it's on pc or something whatever but the how angry they are over it, it it's it's kind of funny it's it's kind of really funny it's just oh man just just keep the salt coming anyways i'm gonna go over some other tweets i found uh throughout the night with you guys so <clears throat> okay this guy says wait exclusive to nintendo again don't get me wrong i'm over the moon there's a new one coming out, but I'm equal parts gutted if it seems like we won't see a proper console get it too. Would have looked stunning. Alright, if you've played Bayonetta 2, you would you would realize that that was one of the best looking games. It doesn't that doesn't have to be ultra realistic, like a game on a on a PS4. Um, but just the effects in that game, the lighting, the the the, the colors and art style. It was one of the best looking games of this generation, of the Wii U generation, uh, even when compared to some PS4 and Xbox One games. A lot of people have recognized that. It, it's just, it, it's, it's, I don't, I don't quite understand that. Besides also the fact that people say a proper console, even though the Switch is selling like hotcakes, it's the same thing like the with the Wii. The Wii sold like crazy, but people still dismiss the Wii. Oh, it's a kiddie console. Oh, that's a family console. Oh, that's a whatever, you know, the, the big boys of the PlayStation, Xbox, right? And that still is happening with the Switch. The Switch could sell, sell hundreds of millions, you know, um, it, it, it could, and people would still be like, oh, well, the PS4 has the big boy games, that's a big boy console. It's like, as long as it has a variety of games that support everyone, which the Switch does, I mean, you have Doom and Skyrim on it. You have other games coming out to it next year, like Wolfenstein 2. You got Bayonetta 3 now. You got Prime 4. You got Pokemon. You already had your Mario and Zelda. You know, there's so many different games. Uh, now it's not even talk about the indies. You know, between first party Nintendo, between third party, between Japanese games, between uh, indie games, eShop only games, uh, party games, the whole nine yards, the Switch has it. So you can no longer say, oh, it's just, it's not a big boy console. It's a console for freaking everyone. For anyone. If you're a true gamer, you're going to have a Switch and you're going to have one other supplementary thing alongside it. Whether it's a PS4, whether it's an Xbox, whether it's a PC. Myself, I am I have a Switch and I have a PS4. That way, I get 90% of the games I want to get in the industry. It's just how it is. Because um, there's going to be exclusives on Switch. There's going to be exclusives on PS4. You know, it's just, just, just how it is. So this whole thing about we won't see a proper console, especially when the Switch is... Like, it's not even all that least powerful than the PS4 and Xbox One. The the gap is a lot smaller this time around. We're not talking about the Wii U. 
the Switch has been proven to be more powerful than the Wii U. It's not as powerful as the PS4 and Xbox One, but the gap is no longer... If the Wii U was a souped-up 360 or PS3 of last generation, um, the Switch is more like an underpowered PS4 and Xbox One, meaning it's still comparable. You can still... A lot of games, there's been multi-platform games that run beautifully on it. Uh, the, the, there's just It's just, okay, so it might not be 4K. It might not be full 1080p. It might be 900p. Or, you know... Uh, it might, instead of 60 frames, it might be 30 frames, you know, or it might be 60 frames with slight dips here and there. You know, it's like, it's not perfect, but the fact of the matter is, and I'm not defending that either, but the fact of the matter is, you're talking about graphic-wise, the only thing you would have on another console is an upscaled version of Bayonetta 3. You know, it's just, it, it's, there's nothing that's going to make it a remarkably better than it would be on the switch because the gap is not that different it's not that wide that's been proven so again talking about it coming to a proper console doesn't make any sense this person i wish nintendo was like microsoft and released their exclusives on pc so i could play them <laughs> that is one of the worst things microsoft has done that makes their console like practically worthless at this point i know people who have played cuphead but pretty much the biggest Microsoft exclusive this year, you know, Cuphead, very overrated in my opinion, but hey, it looks like an interesting game. I know several people who have played Cuphead, and guess what? They've been playing it on PC. I've seen more people play that game on PC than Xbox One. So what's the point of even having an Xbox system if Microsoft's going to have everything on Windows? You know what I mean? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, the Switch has a crap ton of momentum right now, and how do you keep the momentum going? with exclusive games. You promise people Prime 4. You promise people the next generation of Pokemon. Uh, you promise people uh, the next generation of Fire Emblem. Now you're promising people Bayonetta 3. That's how you keep momentum going. If Nintendo came out tomorrow and said, oh yeah, by the way, all the Switch content we're going to release on Steam. Well then, sales for the Switch would dip. That would be a financial nightmare. That would be shooting yourselves in the foot. People don't understand this. Exclusives are good because of the fact that it attracts people to your system. Seriously. I, a lot of these PC fanboys, not PC fans, but PC fanboys, they, I feel like they feel like if everything needs to be on PC, and if everything was on PC, there would be no point for consoles, and I feel like that's what they want. I feel like they want everything on PC and they don't want any consoles, which I don't like that. I'm sorry, I grew up on the NES. I grew up on Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64. Uh, you know, I grew up in the old school days of gaming where you had a box sitting under your TV with a controller hooked up to it with cartridges or eventually discs and things like that. That's what I like to play. It's not the same feeling as playing on a PC. I'm sure a lot of console fans like myself would understand what I'm talking about. And then there's people who'd be like, oh, no, no, well, that's the 90s. Now it's the year 2017. You know, times have changed. But, no, they really haven't when you see a lot of people who still prefer playing on consoles. Uh, PS4 has sold over 70 million units worldwide. You know, the Switch is breaking records. Recently sold over two and a half in Japan alone. So, there's people who like playing on consoles over PC. So, and a part of that is because of the momentum Nintendo has with the Switch. Besides, Nintendo makes the designs their games their, designs their games in a way that works perfectly with their hardware. So, sorry, I don't want Nintendo games on PC. I just don't. This person. Now, this tweet is just ridiculous. God, another Bayonetta 3 game? I don't like knowing that someone's weeaboo wet dream is a fucking giant woman that uses her pussy hair for clothing. Other than that, I'm content with it, I suppose. Again, just trolling, disrespectful... You can tell by the person's um, uh, avatar, their their profile picture. It's just, again, people are just mad that they're not getting the game on their platform of choice. That, that That's just it. This person, again, you can tell he's a little bit resentful, but at least he was respectful about it. He says, and I quote, I guess I won't be playing Bayonetta, Bayonetta 3. Good for Nintendo users. Yeah, if you don't own a Switch, you won't be. It's just, that's just the, you know, that's just how it is. Uh, if you don't own a PS4, you won't be playing uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. You won't be playing, you know, God of War or Spider-Man next year. That's just how it is. You know, if you don't own an Xbox One or a Windows 10 PC, you won't be playing Gears of War and Halo. It's just how it is.
This person. Bayonetta 3 only for Nintendo Switch. Fuck. Again, go out and buy yourself a Switch. That's <laughs> just, just, just how it is. This person, um, I, I, put, I wanted to include this person because this person um, knows what they're talking about. Uh, this person says, I love seeing the people port begging for Bayonetta 3. It's like you guys are too stupid to do a quick Google search and found out and find out why Bayonetta 2 and 3 are likely never getting ported to another console. Do what I did. Get a PS4 and a Switch. You have all bases covered. Exactly. This person, give them props. Give them a round of applause because they know exactly what's up. Just like I, what I was talking about earlier, you have a Switch and you have another console to get yourself the majority of games. A PS4. Just like me. Just like myself, this person has a Switch and a PS4, so you have all the bases covered. Exactly. Um, and l this person, they, again, they, they know their gaming history. They know how the industry works. They know how Nintendo and Platinum Games handle their IPs. Nintendo co-owns the Bayonetta IP. Ever since Bayonetta 2, which was a success on Wii U, a very unsuccessful console, Nintendo has now co-owns the Wii. I mean, not the Wii. I mean, the, <laughs> the Wii. <laughs> they co-own the, uh, co the Bayonetta IP. They split it off with Sega. The deal is Nintendo co-owns the IP with Sega. Sega owns half, Nintendo owns the other half. And Platinum Games has, has the exclusive development rights. Uh, this is basically basically a very similar situation to something like Pokemon. How Nintendo... Even, that, that, that's a little bit differently because Nintendo does have a majority share of it. But Nintendo co-owns the Pokemon IP with the Pokemon company. And Game Freak, and Game Freak by con by contract is the sole exclusive developer for the main series. That's basically what we're seeing here with Bayonetta. Ever since Bayonetta 2, the series going forward is exclusive Nintendo systems. Platinum Games uh, are the exclusive developers for Bayonetta, and Sega and Nintendo both get royalties from it. Sega gets royalties from the IP. Nintendo gets money from publishing it. Plus, they fund the game, and um. And then, of course, Platinum Games gets the development costs. So, yeah, that's basically how it is. It's how it's going to be going forward. Bayonetta 1, the only reason that got a PC release is because Bayonetta 1, it's kind of like a Fox and Disney sort of deal with Star Wars. Disney bought Star Wars, but Fox still owns permanent distribution rights for Episode 4 on New Hope, which was the original Star Wars that started the whole series back in, back in the 70s. So, that's basically like that. Sega and, and Platinum still fully own the rights to the first game. Nintendo does not. Uh, so that's why you'll see Bayonetta 1 on PC. But from 2 and onward, the entire series is Nintendo exclusive because they co-own the IP with Sega. That's just how it is. And like this person said, if you did a Google search, you would find all of that out. It's very, very simple. So now I'm going to the next one. This person's like, man, I hate having hype for a game on a system I don't want to buy. LOL. Well, you're going to have to buy it if you want to play Bayonetta 3. Again, it's just how it is. <clears throat> this person. The Bayonetta 3 reveal was such a disappointment. I was really hoping for a new Donkey Kong, Kid Icarus, heck, even a new Smash for Nintendo Switch. Here's the thing. I agree and disagree with this person. I want a new Donkey Kong. I, I want a sequel to Kid Icarus. And I'm always, some, I'm always uh, you know, stoked for a new Smash. But now this person is... See, what blows my mind is people have been pissed at Donkey Kong for a while because it's taken away from the Retro Studios, you know, taken away from Metroid Prime. But now you have someone wanting a new Donkey Kong, and it's upset that we don't have a new Donkey Kong. A new Donkey Kong will come eventually. I mean, it's one of Nintendo's best-selling series. It's going to come. But what's wrong with Bayonetta 3? You know, Bayonetta is a series that isn't... Um, it's a different kind of series for Nintendo systems, you know? We already have Mario games. We already have Kirby and Yoshi coming out next year. Why does Nintendo need to dump all their side scrollers all at once? Why not have Mario? I mean, not Mario. Why not have Yoshi and Kirby, and then have some different games like your strategy game with Fire Emblem, and your, you know, M-rated action game with Bayonetta 3, and then maybe in 2019, 2020, then you release Donkey Kong. Why not spread out the variety? You know what I mean? Like. It's just funny. And no one talks about a Kid Icarus sequel. I don't ever see people talking about that. That's something I've, I've always said. I want a sequel to Kid Icarus Uprising that was on the 3DS on the Switch. I want that. Now, all of a sudden, you, there's people talking about that. That I, I don't understand. But, you know, I don't understand how Bayonetta 3 was a disappointment. But, whatever. 
Uh, this person is just very in denial. I've never met anyone who enjoyed Bayonetta. Is that why Nintendo America gets the Bayonetta 3 exclusive? Because they're clues and think it's a thing? It is a thing. Bayonetta 2 sold over a million copies worldwide on the Wii U, and that was an unsuccessful system. Uh, it proved to be a financial success. Uh, it got to the point that when Bayonetta 2 was first announced on the Wii U, people were pissed, threatening to kill themselves over the fact that it was exclusive. Um, it has a huge cult following. A huge cult following. A lot of people have said it's basically... Um, you know, a Devil May Cry rival because it's made by the same guy who created Devil May Cry, which is Hideki Kamiya, and it's made by a really renowned uh, developer, Platinum Games, a team that used to be with Capcom, who was, again, under Hideki Kamiya, responsible for such things as Devil May Cry, Beautiful Joe, Okami, you know, things like that. Uh, and then, like, again, they, they went on to make games like Wonderful 101, Bayonetta, uh, you know, thing, thing, just things like that, you know, it's just, it's just, so, Nintendo's not clueless, you're the one clueless, who thinks that, that the millions of people who have played Bayonetta don't enjoy it, which is bullshit, <laughs> you're, you're bullshitting yourself, again, you're just salty that you can't get it on your precious PC or whatever, so, whatever. I'm curious as to why Bayonetta 3 is Switch exclusive when the second game was a financial disappointment on the Wii U. So I guess selling over a million copies is a, is a financial disappointment, even though Platinum and Nintendo both said they were very happy with the sales. They've said it on multiple occasions. Go Google search it. So, yeah, again, salty that it's not on your platform of choice. <clears throat> this person. Part of me is disappointed that Bayonetta 3 is Nintendo Switch exclusive, but more of me is thrilled that this franchise is once again providing a strong third-party blockbuster for Nintendo. So this person, get the first part of your, get the first part of you out of you. Just, you know, don't be disappointed. It's exclusive because, again, if Nintendo didn't save it, it wouldn't have been, you know, it just wouldn't have been a thing. And there's people who would be like, well, that's dumb because they lock us to their platform. Um, they're an industry leader in a, in a very competitive industry. Why would they all of a sudden fund a game, publish a game, and then put it on their rival system. So yes, if they publish and fund a game, it's going to be exclusive to theirs. Sony does the same thing all the time with their games on the PS4. A lot of third-party games. They're doing that with Spider-Man. Which, you don't see me bitching that Spider-Man is not on the Switch. I've never once said, oh, I wish Spider-Man was on the Switch. No, I'm buying Spider-Man when it comes on the PS4. I've been excited for Spider-Man. That's why I have a PS4 to, to play some of the awesome Sony exclusives like that on top of all the great games I have on the Switch. So, again, it's just fanboys being fanboys. They're just salty that the kitty console has been an exclusive. So, yep. My computer's lagging a bit trying to get to the next one. <clears throat> there we go. So this person's like pretty done with Reggie at this point. The Game Awards, hashtag who gives a shit, hashtag Banana 3, hashtag overrated. It's really not all that overrated. Again, when you have a big chunk of people complaining about it, and the game sold a little over a million, which is a financial success, but it's not overrated in the aspect of like Grand Theft Auto 5 that still sells millions every year, you know, since this release, that's overrated, you know, so again, who gives a shit, a lot of people give a shit, the people who are both salty and the fans give a shit, uh, it was trending on Twitter last night, Bayonetta 3 was, so, um, again, you're just salty, that it's on, it's not on the big boy console, this person, Bayonetta 3, now we talking, too bad it's going to suffer being on underpowered hardware, Again, I went over this earlier. It's slightly underpowered. The Switch has been proven that it can play PS4 and Xbox One games. Banana 3 is going to be a more powerful game than the first two because it's on a more powerful system than the Wii U. It's just, again, know your history. Know how the industry works. Know how the systems work. Just because the Switch can't do 4K doesn't mean it's like, the most underpowered thing on the planet. It really isn't. This person. Bayonetta should go back to multi-platform. Still annoyed at this. Okay. 
Talk to Sony, talk to Microsoft, talk to Sega, because they didn't want to fund the series. They didn't. Sega, in general, wanted to keep the rights to it, because they now co-own them with Nintendo, but they didn't want to publish it or fund the games. So, but that's because Sega has a million problems that is their fault to begin with anyways. So, again, you want to go multi-platform? Send letters to Sony or Microsoft or Sega. You know, go to them. Make make your change.org petitions, which if I'm pretty sure one of those is going to pop up sooner or later for Bandit 3, which if it does, I'm making a video for that because that's going to be hilarious. But yeah, again, so it's just buy yourself a Switch and enjoy Bandit 3. That's all there's to it. This person. Holy shit. Hashtag Bandit 3 is coming. Wait, it's a goddamn exclusive for hashtag Nintendo again? What the fuck? But hey, who knows? Someday, Sarah Pay... I, I don't understand. All political, Steam, whatever, bullcrap. Yeah, I don't need to talk about that. Anyways, again, someone just salty that it's exclusive for Nintendo. Know your know your history and know what goes on in the industry because you'll know why it's exclusive to Nintendo. I've already explained it so many times. <clears throat> this person. I'm happy for Platinum Games, but my PS4 would love some hashtag Bayonetta 3 action. If you look down below, someone even commented saying Sony should have funded 2 then. Exactly. Exactly. And then, and then they commented saying, I'm not fam familiar with the story, but I thought they weren't given the chance. Didn't Platinum Games take Bandit straight to Nintendo or Nintendo approached them for Bandit 2? No. Not exactly. Plat Nintendo was one of their last choices. Platinum Games went to Sega? No. Went to Sony? No. Went to Microsoft? No. They may have gone to other, other publishers and developers that we don't know yet. But the thing about it is, Nintendo, after all that, approached them and said, hey... We'll publish the game for you, but we'll also fund it. And we'll give our insight for development. Which is what they did. Which is why Bayonetta 2 was a better game than the first one, even though the first one is also a masterpiece. And it's why it remained exclusive. And then after the success, Nintendo bought half the IP share from Sega. Which is why when you look like on the Smash Brothers page, you see all their copyrights. You know... Bayonetta is even more popular because, again, she was in Smash Brothers. So, Nintendo was not Platinum Games' first choice, but they were Platinum Games' savior when it came to Bayonetta. So, no, you're not going to have Bayonetta 3 on your PS4. It's just, you want you want to play Bayonetta 3, you get a Switch. Don't own just one system, because, again, you're going to miss out on things like this. It's just, just how it is. This person, I fucking hate the Switch. It's too expensive. Hashtag Bayonetta 3. So $2.99 is too expensive? What about the PS4 launched at $3.99? What about the PS3 launched at $599? Even still, outside the holidays, you know outside the holidays, PS4 is going to go right back up in price. Uh, you know, the PS4, 4, the, P, the PS4 Pro is more expensive than the Switch. So, I don't understand how that's expensive. It's just, again... Just you just salty. It's not on your platinum platform of choice. Last one I'm gonna show for you. Hashtag Bayonetta 3. Just why? I know it would not exist without Nintendo, but I'd still rather play on a PS4. Oh well, can't have everything. Capcom, DMC5, do it. <sighs> so here's what's gonna happen. There's all these rumors about Devil May Cry 5 being announced. I'm a big Devil May Cry 5 fan. I've probably been a big Devil May Cry fan more than most of these people on the internet. Um, I own all the games, played them all, beat them. Uh, I even supported the DMC reboot that people hated. Uh, and I've supported the series even after Bayonetta came out. I do actually prefer the action of Bayonetta now, uh, ever since the second game came out, just because they've perfected the formula over Devil May Cry. But I still love Dante. I love the series. So if Devil May Cry 5 comes out, and it's more than likely going to be a PS4 and Xbox One game, which the series has been, that's fine. See, you're going to have all these people that are begging. They're port begging for Bayonetta 3. But... They're going to turn around and claim that Nintendo fans are port-begging for Devil May Cry 5 if it gets announced. Because it's heavily rumored right now. It's rumored to be announced at the PlayStation Experience this weekend. Well, here's the thing. Bayonetta was saved by Nintendo. It's just how it is. You can look at it whatever way you want, but that's the truth. Devil May Cry has always been... It grew up on Sony. It grew up on the PS2. And then later it went multi-platform on the Xbox as well. Devil May Cry has never been... It never has had its own game on Nintendo systems. So, 
I understand this game, this, this series is not a Nintendo series. So when Devil May Cry 5 gets announced, and it says PS4, Xbox One, and maybe maybe PC or Steam, I'll be satisfied. Because you know, want to know why? I own a PS4. I can go and buy it when it comes out and play it on my PS4. I don't need every single game under the sun on the Switch. I'm not port begging. But you'll have all these fanboys that claim Nintendo fans, all Nintendo fans are port begging. No, I'm not. But here's the thing. People are port begging over Bayonetta 3. They just are. A lot of, not as much as Bayonetta 2, but a lot of people are port begging. It's just how it is. But then they'll turn around and say, we're port begging over Devil May Cry 5. And then they'll start saying, well, Devil May Cry 5 is a superior game. It's superior to Bayonetta, Bayonetta every way. Uh, Bayonetta is a ripoff, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's going to be better. It's on the more powerful system. You're going to have people saying that. So let's just, to my fellow, you know, Switch owners and the fellow real gamers, just watch out for that. Get ready for people saying that because you know it's going to happen. You know it's going to happen. So, and this is the start of it. So, again, this has been real fun. People are very, very salty over Bayonetta 3. And I can't wait to, you know keep seeing the salt coming so again i just gotta let you guys know why are you so salty don't fuck with a witch